Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I've got an oddly specific, uh, I don't know if I should call it Frugal Friday, but pack or tutorial. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to turn rough watercolor paper into smooth watercolor paper. And let's give you a little backstory here. I went to Belfast this weekend and did a little shopping and I saw this paper here by Shizen Design. Um, they do, uh, they're made in India, they make beautiful handmade papers. They're usually very rough though. And I saw these eight inch round circles and I didn't even realize that they were hot press at the time. And I thought, ooh, they felt a little thinner than the other ones, but I'm like, I love painting on a round surface and I love that duckle edge. And um, you got 10 sheets for 18, which is 18.95, which I'm like, okay, yeah, I could cut my own paper down, but I'd like having it all done and having the duckle edge. And plus I'd waste all kinds of paper if I did it myself. So I decided to buy them. And then while I was there, I saw they had the five by seven packs of black for 15.95 for 50 sheets. And the, um, the 50 sheet pack of white rough surface for, $13.95. So I'm like 50 sheets for $14. I couldn't pass it up. I was pretty sure I might have some of this already, but I wasn't 100% sure. I grabbed them all. So I got home and I realized I already had, I didn't have this. This was new. I painted this on it and this is on a tutorial on my YouTube channel. I love the surface. It kind of, it felt smoother. There was still some texture, not as smooth as like a typical commercially made hot press paper, but I just love the surface. And I'm like, oh, I wish the paper that I bought was that surface. And then I thought, I wonder if I can make this surface. And turns out I can. So I'm hopefully, I'm hoping the camera will pick up the texture. This is how it comes. This is the Shizen Design rough surface. Um, it just says rough surface, not cold press. And then this is one of the ones I made. This is the same paper from the same pack. And this was the, the, the quote unquote hot press that I made. I say quote unquote, because I didn't use hot rollers and I didn't iron it. But what I did use is a craft room staple that if you are a card maker, you may have. And and I also did it on the black paper. I'll show you the two. I don't know if the black will show up on camera, if the texture will show up at all. Well, you can kind of see this one is a little bit more reflective because it's been flattened. So I'm going to show you how I did it. I also have two examples. This one was painted on the, the just as it comes, the rough surface and this is painted on the, the one I made smooth but obviously variation I painted both of these but I might have used the paint heavier in the center here um, but anyways I like the way that it flows on the hot press I like having options and obviously you could do this as you need to so let's get into it and show you how I did it now what I used you probably have already guessed was my die cut machine this is just my ancient big shot I have a couple of fresh plates and this is if you don't have brand new cutting pads it's fine all you'll need to do is get a couple pieces of like typing paper or cardstock and put it um put them on top put them put the cardstock around your paper so if you didn't have new plates you would put a piece of cardstock or paper down then you would put your rough paper down then you'd put a piece of cardstock then you put your plate now i am working with an old machine that's kind of loose so you know your mileage will vary if you have a newer tighter machine you may need to use just one sheet at a time if you have an older looser machine like i am you can use a couple sheets sheets at a time I've got the um, magnetic plate in, which platform in, which is a little bit thicker than the platform that came with it. So of course, you know, just add sheets of cardstock if you're not getting it flattened out enough. So then I'm gonna put down my plate. I'm gonna put two sheets of the rough paper. Now the, what I would do if you're using new plates is I would have whatever side you want to be front. I don't think it really matters, but you want those, the fronts of your papers, if they have a front to face the plates, because that's gonna give it this, if you want them to have the smoother side, um, cause it's going to be a little bit smoother on the outside than it is on the inside. Cause they're going to be pressed against those hard plates. The inside of the, of the papers will be pressed against each other. So they will be a little bit, they will be more like a cold press and the outside will be like a hot press. And then them, the paper as it was would just be rough. So is that confusing? Make sure you line the paper up well, if you're going to do this. Now you can go through a couple times to make it even smoother. So I'll show you one pass through. Okay, so this is the um, this is the side that was against the plate. This is the side that was on the inside, and I'll show you. This is just untreated paper. Okay, so see how the the inside paper the inside of the paper is a little bit uh, more textured than the the side touching the plate. So you can get you can get pretty specific with the type of um, smoothness you want. So I'm gonna do it again. I suppose you could even like spritz this with water if you wanted to 
um, to flatten it further. We should try that. You want to try that? We'll do that one next. We'll spritz them with water next. Why not? Okay, so I've been just kind of going back and forth generally because I like that. I like that texture, that kind of, uh, well, I guess it's kind of like a soft press, kind of like Fabriano's soft press. This is the handmade paper. It's going to act a little bit differently than other um, than other papers. So let's do let's do a couple where we spritz them with water. I'm just going to move my die cutter for a second. I'll show you. I misplaced my big uh, my big like fine mist sprayer. I don't know what I did with that. I just had it the other day, and I don't typically leave the room with it. But let's give this a just a just a fine mist spray. I'm going to. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to put those together. I'm going to have the, the the sprayed side on the outside because I'm afraid they might fuse together if I wet in the middle of the papers. So let's give that a try and see if that makes it even smoother. But the key here, I, I wouldn't do this unless you have new plates, the uh, the misting, because I think it would like uh, stick to your cardstock and maybe pill the paper. But against the plastic, it shouldn't have any Ill, Ill effects. So I always have a pair of new plates just for interesting little effects like this. And let's, we'll go back through again. Make sure your plates are clean too, because it looks like that one might not have been clean or I got some uh, stuff on it. Oh, I think that's even smoother. I don't know what I got on there. Maybe some lint from the black paper or maybe it was from when I was using my die cutter as a printing press. <laughs> so this is with the water and this is without the water, I think. This is without, this is with the water. I think maybe it's a little bit smoother when you do add the water slightly. I don't think it's really worth it, especially if it picks up lint and gunk and fuses it to your paper. Probably not worth the, worth the effort on that. But, um, but yes, it's fun to try. It's fun to try stuff, right? It's fun to, to experiment. Actually, I had some smudge on that paper too. Could have been in the paper, I suppose, because there are, you will see a fleck here and there. It's 100% cotton rag. And uh, sometimes there'll be little flecks from the garment industry if they used scraps from the garment industry for that. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. Same thing with the black paper. You just take two sheets or one if it's too tight in your in your die cutter. Everybody's die cut cutter is going to be a little different. This should work with any brand, though. You don't want to be, like, forcing it. Like, it shouldn't feel like it's going to break. It should feel like you're cranking a die or an embossing folder through your die cut machine. So if it feels like you're doing more pressure than that, um, I wouldn't take something out, either take out a sheet of paper or use a different sandwich or whatever, but you don't want to be uh, damaging your, your thing. So this is would be the inside texture, this would be the outside texture, and this would be just uh, untreated paper. So the, it's a way to get three different surfaces from your rough handmade watercolor paper if you have some of that and you want to use it up. So I thought that was a fun, um, a fun little little experiment and hopefully that helps you in case you're like me and you bought a hundred more sheets of some paper you already have. I need to uh, probably go on a no buy but um, but this was fun. I'm glad I did this and it's going to make this paper way more useful because now I have a little bit more variety in the types of paper that I have and variety is good because you never know what you're going to need. Now, one other experiment that I tried that I think will work, but it just probably needs a little bit more trial and error is uh, I thought I would use, like take a piece of, um, like a piece of mat board or a piece of cardstock or a piece of chipboard and kind of center it up on a piece and run that through my machine to um, kind of give it a debossed area. And I think that's going to work, but I think the mat board I tried was too thick. I think you just need something thinner and do some trial and error and figure that out if you want to say deboss a frame um, so that you could paint in like the smoother area and have a raised area, kind of like how a print, uh, a print works. So basically it'd be like putting print, like hmm, a print or a printing press basically, and you'd have like a deboss frame. Uh, that's definitely possible, but you'll have to figure it out with uh, either cardstock or chipboard or um, plastic or something to where you can make a little frame that would... Uh, so you'd put this, say, like in the middle of your paper. Once you figured out what size thickness and what material you want, then you'd crank that through and you'd end up with the inner part impressed and the outer part would be raised up and it would just be kind of a fun little frame. I think it'd be fun to paint on, especially for like a greeting card or whatnot, but uh, I haven't quite got the sandwich worked out for that for myself, but, um, but it should work just fine. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little, what do we want to call it? It's kind of like a little, um, artsy invention, artsy, 
lab, art lab, art lab. I think it's already taken. I'm sure somebody's taken that by now. But anyway, that's what we did, and it was fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!